So you've gotten through the whole IA idea generating process and you've landed on calculus. So what does a math IA focused on calculus look like? Well, the first question that we need to ask is, why did you choose calculus? Well, maybe you're curious about calculus. So calculus can be used in a few different ways. You can find the area underneath a curve. Maybe it's an irregular shape of some sort that you need to find, so you're gonna find that area. You could find the volume of something by rotating uh, the, the shape of this irregular curve around the x-axis. That's not in the standard level curriculum anymore, but it's a very easy step to go from finding the area to finding the volume. And, and there's tons of resources about how to do that. Or maybe you're looking at finding the instantaneous rate of change somewhere. Uh, and so you've got a curve of some sort and you need to find the derivative. These are all great ways to apply calculus to your topic. You want to use mathematics to describe something that occurs in your life. Yeah, that's what the Math IA is all about. Using mathematics to describe something that's happening within your life. Or using mathematics to demonstrate, to model something that's happening in your life. And calculus seems like the best way to go. Or you want to optimize something, find the area of an irregular shape, or find some instantaneous rate of change. Those are the key concepts that we really focus on in this course, in the standard level courses. So maybe that's what you want to do. So you're gonna apply some of those calculus-based ideas to your IA. But before we start applying that, we should really have a good feel for what the IA is all about. The IA is all about your thinking and understanding. And I can't stress that enough. It's all about how you think about the mathematics, how you apply the mathematics, and you showing your understanding of what the mathematics is. It's not just you churning out some equations and, and doing a derivative or an integral. It's really about you choosing the best approach and using the mathematics properly. The IA is about the process of getting from the raw data to the conclusion. So however you gathered your data, maybe you've uh, plotted points from a video, maybe you've had to, to get secondary data from a website, whatever it is, how did you get from that data to your final conclusion? It's that process that we're really looking at. And within that process is the application of mathematics in this case, most likely calculus, and how did you apply calculus to that raw data? How did you develop that raw data, apply calculus to it, and come to your end result? But keep in mind that it's rarely about the answer. It's okay if you have your data and you have some hypothesis and you think, you know what, I think this is going to happen, and you go through this whole process and everything is good and in order and it doesn't end up that way, that's okay. You should state that. Embrace that, acknowledge that, and you, maybe your hypothesis isn't correct, but you've gone through this whole process and you say, you can say at the end, yeah, you know what, I wasn't correct, but here's all the things that I've learned as I've gone along here. So if it's all about the process, what does that mean with the IA? Well, here are some things that you should discuss. Why is what you're doing important or relevant? Keep in mind, this is not some college level dissertation where you're a PhD student and you're trying to get your doctorate. You are writing most likely your first paper in a math class or the first paper that has a mathematical focus. That's cool, we understand that. But why is calculus the best approach for this? Why is that relevant to whatever it is that you're looking at, whatever it is that you're exploring? Why is calculus the best approach? For instance, if you can get to the results an easier way, why are you going through all of this with calculus? If you're trying to find the volume of a cylinder, why are you going through this whole bit about rotating the uh, rotating a curve around the x-axis to get the volume when you could just use the volume of a cylinder formula? Make sure that this is relevant to what it is that you're trying to do and that it can't be done some other easier way. You're not wanting to do mathematics just for mathematics sake. You're wanting it to make sense in terms of whatever it is that you're exploring. And you should definitely discuss the method of data collection. So however you do that, whether it's uh, through secondary data or whether it's importing a picture into a graph, plotting points around the outline of something and then using calculus for that. It's okay. Talk about how you gather that data and why this is the best approach to use that data or why this is the best approach to gather the data in the way that you have. So now that you've done that, you need to show your knowledge. And how do you do that? Well, you build your equations versus using technology. You could 
take all of that data and create your own equation and then apply some calculus to it. Or you could use technology to help get you those equations and then you're applying calculus to it. it it's really where is your focus going to be. If you're building your own equations, you're, you know, you're incorporating some of the modeling aspects of, uh, of, the, of the course. And if you're just using technology, then your focus is really going to be more on the, the deep levels of calculus that you're going to do with this. So you want to consider both of those aspects. And choosing the best family of functions if you are building your own equation or if you are using technology. You know, I've seen some people who have data and they put it into their calculator and they have like a tenth power function because they're trying to get the line to cut through every single point. Remember, your equations don't go through every single point. So you don't need to have this extremely complicated uh, equation from technology. Use the one that, that works best, that makes the most sense, right? Then you're going to want to show your differentiation or integration work. You need to show every step of your work. Now, of course, there can be some, some jumps in your, your thinking, but remember that this paper, your audience is everybody in your class. So the top students to some of the students who are struggling in the class, they all need to be able to follow your work. So you don't want to make too big of a leap in your working as you go through this paper. You're going to want to discuss the key points of the graphs of your functions and why these are important to your topic. This is a great way to expand on a calculus paper. A lot of times when you're finding the derivative or you're finding the integral of something, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. But if you start graphing the function and you start looking at the where it's concave up or where it's concave down or where the minimums or maximums are and how those apply to your scenario, to your exploration, that's a great way to expand on your depth of understanding, your depth of knowledge with this topic. It's a great way to do that and I highly recommend it. And then discuss the limitations or constraints of your work. This is going to be across any IA that you do. A lot of times when we're exploring some topic, it's a very complex thing. And in order for us at our level to understand it, we might have to hold some things constant. We might have to say, you know what, I'm not going to factor on friction or I'm not going to fa factor uh, in gravity or I'm not going to factor in all these other things, wind speed, whatever the case might be, however it applies to your topic, but you're going to set those things aside and you're only going to focus on this piece. That's okay, but you need to acknowledge that you are simplifying the problem so you can apply the mathematics in the level that you understand. And, and that's part of what we're looking at, your knowledge, your understanding, the fact that you do need to set some things aside so you can focus on other things. This is all part of your knowledge, your thinking, your understanding. So with all that said, what is the IA all about? Well, like I said before, it's about your thinking and understanding. This whole thing, the whole reason you're going through this is to show your thinking and your understanding and give you an opportunity to do that outside of a test paper, a paper one, a paper two, a paper three, whatever papers you're doing. So this is giving you that venue to do that and the process in getting from raw data to conclusion. Again, I said this before, I'll say it again. How do you get from here to here? using all the logical information that we've talked about in the course, the data gathering, the sampling, the uh, regression lines, the plotting of the data, the, the, the equations, the modeling, the graphing, the integration, the, the derivatives, all of that stuff. That's what this is all about. So after you've gotten through all this, if you're now thinking, well, maybe calculus isn't the right approach for me, that's cool. Check out this playlist where I go through some of the other main topics uh, of focus that you can have for your mathematical IA. I hope it was helpful. Share it with some friends because I bet you're not the only one struggling with finding ways to write about your IA. And I'll see you in the next video.